this is a previous neat question which I have selected for this paper. Ideal therapeutic radioisotope is. Now therapeutic radioisotope means that I am giving an isotope systemically to kill the tumor. So to kill the tumor we need beta emission. So obviously the answer is either A or B because both of them are saying strong beta emission. So ideal therapeutic isotope should have strong beta emission. But an ideal emit should also have low or weak gamma emission on the side so that that gamma emission will help to image the isotope. Beta will help to kill the tumor and gamma rays are detected by the gamma camera. You are able to see where the isotope is localized now. So the answer to this question is B. Ideal therapeutic isotope should have strong beta emission and weak gamma emission. Remember an isotope called as lutetium-177 that when you tag lutetium to dota tat is used in radiotherapy in targeted radiotherapy for neuroendocrine tumors. It is again a strong beta emitter, weak gamma emitter. Next is a clinical vignette where you have a patient with acute abdomen and you are supposed to find where is the problem located. I want you to look at this image and the, look at the top of this image. You will see my arrows pointing to a free air. There is collection of free air be, below the anterior abdominal wall. Why it has gone here? Because the air rises up and when a CT is being done, the patient is supine and you can see the collection of air behind the anterior abdominal wall in a patient with pneumoperitoneum. I believe this is a potential AIMS question con considering how this kind of questions of gas under diaphragm, pneumothorax are very often asked in the AIMS exam. Next is the question based on brachytherapy. Brachytherapy means that we can we keep the isotope directly in contact with the tumor or in the tumoral cavity like do we do in CA cervix or in the substance of the tumor. So we know that choice D is correct. Brachytherapy is used for CA cervix. So answer is between A and B and C. Brachytherapy has the advantage that it delivers a much more high radiation dose to the tumor as compared to surrounding tissues while this is not true for teletherapy. So choice C is wrong because it says brachytherapy gives same proportion of radiation as teletherapy is wrong. It gives much higher radiation to the area in the localized area as compared to teletherapy. So C is wrong. It is used for CA cervix, CA endometrium, CA breast, CA esophagus. So B is correct. And today even in brachytherapy we have 3D techniques available which have improved the delivery methods. So A is also correct. So answer to this question is C. Because the question was which of the following is not true. Next is again a clinical vignette with an x-ray image. 22 year old man, swollen wrist, x-ray shows a lytic lesion. In, now look for growth plates. The growth plates have fused. So that means we are looking at an x-ray of an adult. Aneurysmal bone cyst is seen in metaphysis of a child. So this is not aneurysmal bone cyst because this is epiphysis of an adult. And the lesion is eccentrically placed, subarticular, just below the joint. You can see the disease is extending to the joint. It is eccentrically placed, expansile lesion called as osteoclastoma or the so bubble appearance of the GCT. Simple bone cyst is centrally located metaphysial lesion in a child. This is epiphysial lesion in an adult. Answer is osteoclastoma. Next is a slightly integrated question where you have a 25 year old man with automobile accident. CT is shown to you and you need to tell us where is the blood. Now you can see a biconvex hematoma overlying the brain. But you can see this hematoma is limited by skull sutures. That because this hematoma is in the epidural space. Epidural space is between the inner table of the skull and the outer endosteal layer of the dura. Endosteum fuses at the sutures. Hence, this blood is limited by the skull sutures and it has biconvex shape. This is EDH, extradural hematoma, and the artery involved is middle meningeal artery. You have to identify the area which has been marked in the brain. Now I have put a blue arrow now and the blue arrow is now marked at the caudate nucleus. The blue arrow is showing you head of caudate nucleus. I have put another thick blue arrow at the putamen. So the yellow mark that you see in the image is medial to the putamen and this is called as the globus pallidus. 
this area is called as the globus pallidus so the answer is globus pallidus for you in the actually the arrow is here and so the answer is actually globus pallidus in the next you have a clinical vignette where a woman has pancreatitis recurrent pancreatitis no alcohol no gallstones so the classic causes of pancreatitis are ruled out here there is no gallstones no alcoholism mrcp shows pancreatic divism what is pancreatic divism a pancreatic divism means that the dorsal pancreatic duct and the ventral duct are opening separately in the duodenum the dorsal pancreatic duct which is the duct of santorini drains into the minor papilla while the duct of versa or the ventral pancreatic duct drains into the major papilla and that is why this patient has recurrent pancreatitis it is a common ductal abnormality and you can see for yourself the answer is c because the dorsal pancreatic duct draining into the minor papilla is what you find in mrcp in a patient with pancreatic divism ct angiography of a patient a very hot favorite for neat pg exam this is a previous neat image it has been asked in the neat pg in the past exams and you can see there is a saddle shaped embolus in the pulmonary artery so you this is the pulmonary artery and you can see the filling defect saddle shaped filling defect here this is saddle embolus and the answer is pulmonary embolism